Hey everyone, hope you're doing well out there. In this episode, I spoke to Jordan Brooks. He's a rapper from Louisville, Kentucky, and a member of Save the Kids. We talked about his upcoming album, Skylar, and everything leading to its eventual release in October. With that being said, here's Jordan. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well out there. In this episode, I spoke to Jordan Brooks. He's a rapper from Louisville, Kentucky, and a member of Save the Kids. We talked about his upcoming album, Skylar, and everything leading to its eventual release in October. With that being said, here's Jordan. Is this a 2020? It is. That's nice. I, that was like my first mic I ever got. I rave about this microphone because really? it's so good. It's, it's got such a great dynamic too. range and it's so affordable. Super cheap. It's a hundred dollar mic that's yeah. damn near close to some professional ass mics. Yeah, it was the first one I started out with and I had it for a while. So like actually really recently. So yeah, it's it's it really just shows how far we've come. Yeah. With, with technology. <laughs> it's like that this microphone can be one hundred dollars. And it's just like it it works. Anybody yeah. can use it. They yeah. can put it in a studio. Nobody would notice, honestly, if you got to get enough mix. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you're doing a lot of stuff in yeah. post, yeah, it's it's insane. I only use the SM7B over it because yeah. uh, of the low low end frequency mm -hmm. that it has. Yeah, it's, I just got one of those. I think for his graduation, <coughs> he's been yeah. using it like crazy just because it's so nice. That's a, that's a buy it for life microphone. Yeah. Yeah. You'll use that microphone for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah. It's built like a tank. It was really like our dream microphone too, yeah. so it was super nice. And the fact that microphone is insanely dynamic. Yeah. Can because, do a lot. you know, it has like a low end cutoff, mm -hmm. but like it it doesn't need it. Right. Because it needs so much phantom power. Yeah. Like he'll know he probably has to, had to get like a cloud lifter mm -hmm. or an interface mm -hmm. with like a lot of phantom power. Yeah. To give it's, it. That's process. It was yeah. at first. He didn't realize all that. It took him a while to actually be able to use it. Yeah, I think that happens to everybody who yeah. buys the SM7B <laughs> at first. They simple. plug it in, they're like, they're cranking up the gain. <laughs> and they're like, the gain's at 100. What's going on yeah, here? Why is it not so working? I had so many issues like that when I first started. Yeah. I, like, what the? I didn't even know what an interface was. I just got a mic. And yeah. I was like, I'll be able to do that. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait, how do I plug this into my laptop? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it's a process. USB microphones have come yeah, pretty they, far, Yeah, they really though. have. I, I used to use a Yeti, but they've come so mm -hmm. much further than that. I started with a, well, after my phone, I mm -hmm. used a Yeti, and, but I had I used an extension cable <laughs> that was like 25, 30 feet long. Oh, my gosh. And it's just, that's just like, yeah, a, that probably just like just, a USB. And so I had that's data insane. loss. Like latency, I had yeah. it was literal like da data loss. Wow! From because like I would just have chunks that would just like be gone from the, <laughs> you could zoom into the wave file. God, and I could not it would imagine. be like a wave, but then there'd just be a chunk that's was just it a gone. Snowball, the Yeti snowball. Uh, n no, uh, oh, I, I that's the, the first one I. I yeah, had. it is the goat because <laughs> my friend had that one, but I had one that it sort of looked like a. Uh, an SM7B mm -hmm. kind of it's 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 the like the kind of streaming yeah. microphone or something. That's cool. But the the Yeti is the go. Yeah, like that was out when I was like in middle school. Yeah, when I was like that has been out middle forever. school too. Yeah, that's what I was like, like recording like covers on like karaoke yeah. videos and stuff was on I, a Yeti snowball. I'd like to get a Yeti snowball from like. 2009 or oh, yeah. 2008 oh, and yeah. like do a shotgun test with it that would be super like cool. uh, with a sm7b or just like <laughs> with, with this even yeah because this is the new like yeti because right. it's, it's it's the same price as the yeti was it's like, super cheap and super it's reliable it's got to be better it's an xlr to that would be cool over it. that'd be a really cool to concept see, too yeah yeah see what the and yeah that'd be cool to see like uh how like do like the same mix or do like mm -hmm. the same song you could do like the same 16 bars. Yeah, that would be super And cool. record it on like these different mics that are like nostalgic mics. Yeah, that's like, that's a good content idea yeah. too, for real. Yeah, that'd be something we could do. But oh, yeah, Jordan Brooks, I appreciate you coming by. Of man. course. Uh, you're a rapper from Louisville, Kentucky, and you have an upcoming album called Skylar that is scheduled for release in October, correct? Yes, indeed. So you are also involved in the rap group Save the Kids mm -hmm. with Prodigy the Kid. First off, what is the ideology and mission behind Save the Kids? I feel like really just positivity overall. Like that's our main goal. Um, with rap music specifically, we don't all make rap, but within rap, there's a lot of negativity, a lot of the wrong messages being sent out to kids and it leads into further things and it's just not good for the youth. So our goal is really just to push positivity and bring the community together and really try to do good things. 
And other than that, we just make music, and stay to ourselves. Cool. Awesome. Um, I, I believe I saw an event that you yeah. guys had. I was out of town, unfortunately, but uh, I made a joke to uh, to Jalen that it was the real gazebo fest. <laughs> because you guys yeah, were on a we real... We were in a gazebo. You were actually yeah, in the gazebo in. right there. It was like, uh, all, it was eight of us, I think, packed into that little gazebo, but it was super fun. Like, yeah, that looked like It was like the first time we came together for a performance, so... We didn't have much energy in the crowd because it was at the park in the middle of the day, <laughs> the same day as the ESTG concert. Mm-hmm. So we were like, we don't expect too much out of it. But when we had everybody on stage together, we didn't need anything from the crowd. It was just yeah, I lo- such that was, good energy. I loved that footage. Yeah, like, it was that, awesome. It was super wholesome. And Definitely want to do it again. AJ's first concert. Oh, yeah. That's super my awesome. Dog. Glad. It was an honor to be AJ's first concert. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Uh, so who are the other artists involved in Save the Kids? And so, uh, what is your relationship with them? Right now, we've got Prodigy the Kid. Obviously, he kind of uh, brought us together. We call him group leader as a joke, but Hmm. he really did bring us all together. He got us connected. Like Some of us weren't even really connected with each other before, and we've just bonded such a good relationship now because of this opportunity. So we've got Prodigy the Kid. He, uh, I met him when he did a verse for me, and it's just it was kind of like that. We clicked. So other than that, he brought on me and Ty. Ty is like my homie for like three years now it's been a minute it's been a minute looking back on it it doesn't feel that long but it's been a while we've been friends we've been making music together we perform together and then we've got vibe like ty she does a lot of r&b super big i doubt she needs any explanation honestly you probably know of her um you got the ty twins oh yeah and then we got uh Yariel Official, super cold, super cold Latin artist. He also does a lot of parties, a lot of promoting. He really helps all of us out with that, for real. That's awesome. And then we've got Sam Newby. He's like he's like the rookie of the group. He's the underrated one, for real. Mm-hmm. I'd tell, we were just talking about it. Who's the best lyricist in the city? Who do we think? Mm-hmm. Like, honestly. And my first answer was Sam Newby. But nobody yeah. knows because he hasn't dropped yet. <clears> but they will know. They will know, for sure. I can speak to his like dedication oh, yeah. and passion because oh, yeah. when we did... Uh, band practice mm-hmm. here for uh prodigy the kids show you know he was like hype man he was there to like he was and he he was there every practice yeah like He's even dedicated. when some of us who were playing vital instruments <laughs> didn't make it he would show up every single time ready to go and po- like man. positive and dedicated like to just make us all feel good so very respectful shouts out too. to sam for that like He's just there to hype everybody yeah. up and he doesn't really ever give himself the credit he deserves so i'm glad i get to give it to him for real i yeah. hope he watches this because yeah. sam newbie's the one to watch out for just as soon as he starts dropping i promise it's coming for oh real. yeah i i can tell like, yeah he's I heard some of his, you know, features with so Prodigy, cool. and he's insane. So good. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so let's talk about uh, Skyler. Of course. Uh, can you tell us about the inspiration behind this album in general? Yeah. Like, what kind of sparked? Uh, was it just this is my next project, or uh, was there certain things that happened? Um, I feel like originally. I thought of the concept of Skylar because it's like, it's my middle name. And in the past, I had a release called Good Morning, Mr. Brooks. And that was kind of like my introduction to rapping. And I wanted to like give myself a new introduction with this album, really. And just to, I made a song called Single Mother. And that really was like, that was my solidifying. All right, I need to tell my story in this album. Tell everybody like who I am because I feel like I've never gotten the chance to do that with my music. I've been learning how to make it. So I was making party music. I was making a bunch of stuff that I don't necessarily necessarily relate to. And so with this album, I just want to be able to put something out that I enjoy. And I feel like that's all it is. I um, There's a couple of songs on there. They're like some pretty deep stories that I went through. Um, I've seen some violent things. I was in a wreck in December. Um, I saw some police violence go down in December. So it's it was it was a rough month and that really inspired me to just be raw with this album. Like I went back into a few songs just to listen to them and like really listen if I'm lying at all. Like even if there's just a random line where I'm just yeah. saying something to flex, it's just like it doesn't that's not what this album's for. So it's like I really just want to crack down and just be one hundred percent raw with it because I think that's how I can get people to like me. Like good music only goes so far, but you really gotta know somebody. And that's my goal with it, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking your truth and it being yeah. the truth is yeah. surreal. Um, so what a, 
Why did you choose Skylar as the title for the album? What meaning does that have? Um, like I said, it's my middle name. Like growing up, I was I was kind of ashamed of it. I always thought it, everybody told me it was a girl name, and <laughs> it's like I, I was I was just so ashamed of it. And like I said, I had Good Morning, Mister Brooks. I dropped that in the past, and I kind of wanted to do something with my name, but also something that is me, and kind of give it like a self titled feel. So to me, this is like a self titled album, like. It's very raw. Like I would never tell anybody my middle name before this, but this is just like me saying, here it is. Here's everything. Like this is all I have. I'm not keeping anything under. So I I feel like I couldn't think of anything. And in the past, I would think for weeks on the album name. And this one just like, it came to me. So that's what it's been for almost a year now. Mm -hmm. Hasn't even come out. Has putting all these experiences and memories and things that define you as an artist and manifesting them into music shaped your outlook on music itself and life? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I feel like before I was doing it a lot more for fun. Like I still make me it's still fun. It's super fun. But that was like the sole reason I was doing it. Like it was I didn't have anything to do. Let me try to think of a song. Mm. Now it's like. I just like went through a lot. I need to vent and I'm just like writing my notes for maybe a few weeks and it comes together into a song and it works out beautifully, honestly. And I just try not to force it. Like back when I first started, I was writing 10 songs a day of just nonsense. Like Mm -hmm. I wasn't being me. I was being a completely different personality on each song because I was just Mm -hmm. learning who I was and it just, I don't know, it (laughs) kind of got burnt out. So now I only really make music when I feel something and it's nice. I got you. Makes me appreciate it a lot more, for sure. Yeah. So you're you're able to utilize it to a way to kind of, uh, as a conduit for these complicated emotions and and experiences. Yeah, it's kind of of coping almost, yeah. Yeah. I see that. I've seen that for years in the hardcore Mm -hmm. scene of Louisville where young people can come to this safe space. Yeah, for sure where the world has rejected them, but this is like a family, like a safe place for them to be in. And they start, you know, what looks like crazy dancing, you know, <laughs> fists flying in the air to some really insane music, but it's a way for them to get these emotions out in a yeah. positive way, like through music. Like when m- most of the time, these negative emotions, especially when you're that young, uh, they end up going inward or outward yeah. towards other people you love or yeah. towards yourself. But then there's this really special out for them for them to get out through music. Yeah, whether it's that. creating music or being a part of it. And that's super so awesome. that's that's uh that's I, I see that in what you're doing there. Uh so what what challenges uh would you say you you faced during this album's mm-hmm. creation that were different than previous experiences? Besides, I guess you you went over the fact that uh, you had to start working through some things mm-hmm. through the music instead of just making songs. Yeah. You're bored. Uh, so, somebody who's like may be looking into this and say, like, how do I make this? How do I turn this to from practice to therapy? Mm-hmm. Like, what would you say those stepping stones could be, and what challenges could they uh, seem to expect from that? I feel like just appreciation is really the first step, just really appreciating what you're doing and Mm. taking a step back and realizing that you're making a song that's permanent. There's no reason in wasting time or not redoing this line because you don't feel like it. It's like Mm -hmm. you're going to listen to that for the next month and think about that one line you didn't redo. Mm -hmm. And it's just like I never took my time. I never appreciated it. And Seeing scary stuff made me appreciate a lot of things. And it's just, that's one of the biggest Mm -hmm. things. I feel like that in professionalism has been the biggest difference. I, you know, I've been trying to be a lot more professional with my mixes, not do them all myself because you got to be honest with yourself sometimes. It's just, you know, you got to compare yourself to the industry standard. And I feel like that's really been my goal, like cleaning up my writing and just, if an outsider were to hear this, they wouldn't think twice that it was an underground quote unquote artist they would just think it's a normal artist that's my goal and i'm i'm hoping it comes through like that i really am yeah yeah i think it uh it will impact listeners who've gone who've gone through it. like similar experiences uh so what do you what do you, where are you expecting to 
land with this album as far as your journey as an artist and where do you expect to go from here? Um, I feel like my biggest goal is really just, I don't necessarily want it to reach the masses. Like it would be nice if it did. I feel like that's every artist's goal is for everyone to hear it. But I just want the people that do hear it to fully understand it and appreciate it. I just really hope that this music is appreciated for a while. And I do. I seek longevity in it and mm -hmm. I see it. I really hope it's there. Afterwards, I really don't know. I don't know what my next steps are. I've really been focused on the promotion, locking down on it. I've thought about other genres maybe, so we'll see. Gotcha. It's up in the air, honestly. We'll see after it drops. I'm trying to like laser in on this and really get it airtight mm -hmm. and, and just see where it goes. So the latest single we heard with mm -hmm. the music video, is that a part of the new record? Yeah. Yeah, that was the first single. I That's haven't awesome. said it. I haven't. I didn't like say this is the lead single. Mm -hmm. I might with my next one. We'll see. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, that definitely was the first one. I thought about including one I dropped back in May, but like I said, the professionalism. I just want to have every song nice and clean, a video for each single. So yeah, every video that's seen in the future, that'll be on the album. And who did you shoot that video with? That was Monarch Visuals. Monarch His name's Visuals. Gus Dickman. He's 19, 20 years old, super wow. talented. Yeah, I, I super talented. I usually see the same five names. Yeah, in local yeah. Uh, scenes, and so it's really cool to see he's, somebody with such striking visuals. Yeah, he's that. actually based out of Southern Indiana, so I recently awesome. moved over there. So it was a nice link up. We got it done in like an hour. It oh my was god, super quick! It was just him and his what little brother. It was me and my partner, and we just we did it like that. And super great outcome. Like yeah, my the video is really video incredible. I have by far. I yeah. love it. That's really, really cool. Uh, yeah, I love uh, I love uh, the way that that video comes off and I just the, the energy behind it. And yeah. yeah, his editing is is great. Yeah, I thought it really matched the song too. I was mm -hmm. I was hyping him up for weeks afterwards just because I just love that video. I can't wait to do our next one. So where did you record the, uh, the album at? All at home. All the recordings nice. were done at home. Um, the mixings, I send them off to somebody. Um, I haven't had all of it mixed yet, just kind of mixing them as they drop and then mm -hmm. we'll lock in and have a mass session. Other than that, I try to do everything at home just because there's such raw songs and that's where I see comfort. I like to be able to sit there for hours and perfect the song. And yeah. when that's running out of my pockets on studio time, it's hard to do, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I think it's uh, more and more people are, are doing it themselves yeah. because it's possible and you just... You have YouTube University right mm -hmm. there to teach you how to do it all at the fingertips. So it's it it's it's super. It, it, but the, I also see a way of like uh, I see both sides. I see artists like uh, myself who I just want to do everything myself because it's oh, yeah. mine, and I don't want to have to wait on anybody, and that's understandable. Yeah. But then there's the ones who are like, I want to focus on being an artist, right? Because I always talk about how artists today are asked to do so many more things than artists you know 10 20 years mm -hmm. ago I'm like my gosh like you have to be social media uh like manager you have to be videographer photographer Listers editor on, on. you it's have insane. to be everything engineer and, half the time yeah and engineer yeah. you've got to engineer your own music and so it, sometimes that can be overwhelming and some artists are like i just want to create my art i, I fully just, get it what I, and I, so i get both sides yeah of it. uh and so uh it just it's really great when those people are able to have like a team behind them yeah. and so uh i think both both sides of that are valid for sure i hope i hope one day i'll be able to just step away from it and record it and that's it but as yeah. of now i like to have my hands on it's nice it's yeah hopefully in a few years i'll be able to say that i made this album by myself at my house and that'll be nice yeah absolutely and we're we're definitely getting there yeah so um Let's talk about some of your uh, influences for the record. Okay. Uh, what are what, was there any artists you were listening to, or any any artists that you could point at and say like I I really took something from their experience of creating their album and tried to implement it into mine. Yeah. Um, I feel like a big one would definitely be Jordan Ward. Have you heard of him? Uh, I have not. He uh, he actually performed at the Gazebo Fest. I'm oh, okay. so sad that I missed that. But mm. he uh, he dropped this album. I believe it's called Moreward. 
or forward, something okay. like that. And it's it's beautiful, front to back. It's an amazing record. He has this songwriting that he does where um, he'll write about something, and it's just something very peculiar. Like he has a song called Zoomies, and basically the whole song is it's about dogs and how they get the zoomies. They get excited, but really it's just about it's about two people in love. Like they're touring around Europe, and it's just such a unique writing style that immediately i admired and like he has these vocals that really match up well with it a lot of harmonies a lot of melodies in the background and as soon as i heard that tape at the beginning of the year i kind of like immediately rerouted my album i wasn't rapping as much i was trying to sing more which was really back to my roots because i sang when i was younger and i kind of like took that writing style i have a song called gorilla glue on the album and the whole time you would assume it's about a love interest but really it's just about weed and it's just like just little things like that that maybe the average listener might not pick up on but an avid hip-hop fan who studies and analyzes lyrics when they hear them they'll really appreciate it and i i really love how he did that yeah that's awesome yeah i i I think it's incredible how in-depth some people can go with their writing and like watching like video essays and breakdowns of lyrics. It's like, oh my gosh. Of just a three minute song. I can't song. believe it. Yeah. yeah, it's insane. It's it's very admirable. Yeah, I, I remember like hearing like Black Thought for the first time. Yeah. Being like, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> like there's just this so is much more to music than yeah. you hear when you first hear it. And that, that's, there's a lot of songs on the album that are like that, that you might have to listen to it a few times to get the full meaning. But even if you listen to it once, you'll enjoy it. You just might not yeah. really get it. And that's okay yeah absolutely and that's what that's what can make a song really great is mm-hmm. having to marinate with it you right. know and like have it just sit with you for a while and then you're in the car later and you're like oh that's what that means <laughs> it's like oh my exactly. gosh yeah i'd love to see like a uh a, a lyricism olympics <laughs> <That'd be amazing. laughs> hey it's the time for it we might need to get it started yeah four more years yeah i'd love to see that on tv <laughs> but uh Speaking of TV, though, um, so uh, you've told me that you're a fan of shows like The Challenge and Big oh, Brother. Yes. Me. So what what draws you to these shows? Uh, as cliche it is as it is, I think it's just drama. I, like I, mm-hmm. I can't help but love drama. I think every human does. As much mm-hmm. as I hate to admit it, you can't help you. but meddle. You can't help it over here, mm-hmm. and it's just like also just the reality of it like i love real things like scripted tv is good i love the office like you can't Mm -hmm. i love scripted tv but like just the reality of some of those shows like the competitive shows like the challenge i just Mm -hmm. it's so real you know what's happening i love that i got you i got you yeah i i i used to watch them with somebody who i was seeing for a a bit but uh i yeah i i i get it yeah. I get it. It's yeah, like it's a, like a guilty pleasure, yeah, really. A, I get the guilty pleasure <laughs> of that for sure. Yeah, my mom was definitely a big influence growing up. Lots of reality shows. So That's awesome. I get it from her for sure. So how is 90s hip-hop culture with shows like MTV Cribs and Yo! MTV Raps influenced your music and style? I mean, I I just like, I, I admire them. I've mm-hmm. always been into hip hop history. Like when I was in college, that's like half, half of my courses. I was just kind of using the easy elective credits to learn about hip hop, mm-hmm. just going to the library, getting all the books. But like, I've, I wasn't alive then. That's like what I admire about it. I'm mm-hmm. young and I didn't get to live in the time where hip hop was thriving. And so I feel like it's very selfish to do this genre and not try to at least learn about where it came from what i'm doing it's just yeah. i love learning about it like i hate that i wasn't there for it just a few more years earlier i would have been but i just love watching like there's a channel that i found that has old mtv cribs and i just put that on while i smoke and it's all i watch and it's just it's so fun to learn that's awesome about something i'm super into already so it's just like mm-hmm. i don't know sometimes i'm taking notes like i love learning so mm-hmm. it's super fun I was just watching. This is this was super out of character for me, but I loved it. <laughs> uh, I found I was like, this is a guilty pleasure for me that I just found l- literally last night. <laughs> I loved this video game Halo Two back mm-hmm. in the day, and uh, but they I just found some esports footage because I, w- I wanted to look up tournament footage, but I looked up wow. MLG footage <laughs> of 
It was like some of the first esports stuff, and it's like these guys getting like two hundred fifty thousand dollar contracts to play Halo Two it's competitively, sick. and they would go like behind the scenes <laughs> with them, and like go back to their house, like, yeah, I had to like stop talking to my friends <laughs> once I stopped doing t- ten hour days playing Halo, oh but gosh. it was all worth it. Oh my god! And it, yeah, I was, I was like, and this all <laughs> took place in like two thousand and six or two thousand three to two thousand and six, and so I was like a baby child i was i was very young yeah, yeah uh in in 2000 i was like in third grade or yeah. fourth grade and so i wasn't like around really for this or cognizant of Still what was going on but though. i was super nostalgic oh, for yeah. it because i played that game it's, i, was, I, I that. love that i'm nostalgia hunting all the time like mm-hmm. looking at old pictures looking for old tv shows i just i love it yeah there was recent oh my gosh this was magical i'll have to show you uh some video of this uh but i performed in uh Bloomington, Indiana, mm-hmm. not too long ago, a few days ago. And we played this. It was like a, if you imagine just like industrial hell, just like <laughs> factories around. And then there's this like a, a abandoned looking shopping center. Oh my gosh. There's this place called Healer. And it's just, it doesn't look like there's anything in there. There's no, there's no signage, but you open the door and it's this almost like it, it's like a haunted house look in the inside what? but each room it has a different theme one has a theme That's of like retro sick. technology some have themes of like uh just like comfort or just like having a bunch of like cds on the wall and some of them have like a bunch of rubber ducks everywhere That's or something sick. and one of them was a 90s themed room wow. and when you walked in it had all these 90s themed posters oh my and it had gosh. a ps2 with two guitar hero controllers <laughs> plugged in ready to go wow. and me and my friend skylar who was playing guitar for the that band he he was like are we doing this and i was like absolutely <laughs> Gotta he whips in. out his phone and i am taken back because he immediately oh starts gosh. putting key codes into oh guitar Hero controller <laughs> just going pop 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 putting in unlocked all the songs That's so funny. and then we immediately go in and play like uh how two long were you there uh we were there uh it was a long time we we're there for like three <laughs> uh, three four hours five hours and uh but we were in that room probably for one hour of it that's sick but that's it was so awesome. it was it was a crazy vibe because there's like a band like performing wow. going nuts in the other wow. room and, and we could hear them while we were like playing guitar one of those nights where it's like this doesn't even feel real yeah like, it, did, it did not feel real at all yeah we need more things like that in the city for sure yeah that's something you only find in like rural oh yeah towns where like yeah it, it it's music scenes in rural areas are really cool and special because like people put they everything into them, them and they, they cherish them. them so much it's not like pick whatever venue you right. want when you're in a big city right louisville where we've still cherish our venues somewhat mm-hmm. because like especially in like the I, you know i think in every scene but right. in hardcore where we lose them and get right. them back so fast and <laughs> lose them and we don't we barely have any all ages venues so the mm-hmm. all ages venues we hold on to and uh yeah know a lot about that <laughs> yeah and so we we just got we just got a new house venue thankfully uh wow. shouts out camp spaceman oh yeah yeah i went yeah. there yesterday for a show just to check I, it out jalen was there too yeah i checked out a show there and uh yeah, they got got a really cool space. They already have Super touring sick. bands coming oh by. That's and insane. Like, see, like that's that's like, why Lobo right, is so you. awesome. The hardcore yeah. scene is just people want to. Uh, yeah, there was a guy who came to the show uh, from Florida, and just he, <laughs> he's, uh, he's he said he loved five hundred two sh- shows so wow. much, or he like just had heard of us from internet hype. Wow, I was like, oh, okay, God bless. That's awesome. Uh, so your interest in 2000 country music is quite unique. Uh, <laughs> are there any specific artists or songs from that area you enjoy? I don't know specifics. I, it's just like my mom and dad, they were so blended like with the music. It was mm-hmm. from Eminem one song to some country the next song. So mm-hmm. I mean, like off the top of my head, I don't know how many I like Blake Shelton. I think that might be the first song I ever sang in public was a Blake Shelton song. So nice. it's like, I've always got to give country music its credit for the reason I do what I do. Like, mm-hmm. um, I started out singing in bars, just doing karaoke. I was like 12. They all loved me. Just because nice. I was just a little 12 year old kid yeah. singing while my mom bartended. Singing country music. And I was singing country music every time, and they ate it up. So it's mm-hmm. just like, that's my roots. And 
I, you turn on some country music, I'm going to yeah. sing along. I'm going to sing yeah. my heart out, but I might be a little ashamed. It's another guilty pleasure. Mm-hmm. I might not ever turn it on myself, but I'm going to sing along every time. Yeah. Tennessee whiskey will always be a guilty yeah. pleasure. Oh, not even guilty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I'm of that not atypical group of people who like, I like old country, mm-hmm. you know, uh, before it got like, super polished yeah like, you know patsy klein era yeah. it's like that's when like country yeah. was like con- when country music was about like coal miners who were trying to <laughs> unionize yeah it was like and well, people who are like country go- yeah like people who were like going through it like my god and then you know of course there's like the radio version that that's kind of gross where it's like you know the pickup trucks and the ex-wives yeah, and all that stuff but there's really great stuff in country music it's a lot of good the, storytelling too a lot of storytelling uh, oh yeah there's a and there's a there's a artist right now who i i've loved for a while mm-hmm. since she came out with this album golden hour but uh her name is casey musgraves yeah i know casey and, musgraves yeah she took like she was just like a country music artist and apparently she took acid and then made like and then she made this album golden hour which was it's like somebody with these deep country roots yeah who's only made country her whole life made a dream pop album that's sick. that was country as fuck that's <laughs> it sick. was like I so heard of that. cool incredible i album. definitely need to check that out highly for sure. highly for sure highly recommend it it is so good so i just love stories like i love when there's a story behind the album i'm probably yeah. gonna listen front to back even if i yeah. don't enjoy it i'm gonna listen just for the story yeah it, it's so unique in that it is like yeah it's very dream pop and very organic and experimental with yeah. how it sounds but it is like it's a country band is her like same band she just <laughs> like insane. asked her band to play some weird stuff that's you know? wild like, that's awesome though can you like just could we just do something really weird <laughs> completely like, different yeah and so it's like these traditional country artists playing some like something you'd hear from like a tame impala album or yeah, something you know, that's this insane. is this is different awesome. i might listen yeah. on my way home yeah, really, really good. Shouts out Casey Musgrave. Yeah, like I said, it's in the air. You don't know. You might hear a Jordan Brooks country song. You hey, never know. It's I, in the air for hey, sure. I, I would love that. <laughs> I would love that. I'm here for that. Uh, yeah, if you need any guitar for that, hey. I got you. Uh, do you play any instruments, by the way? Growing up, I did. I um, I learned guitar when I was little. I learned piano. I Well, yeah, I took lessons for piano, but I've always like played by ear on piano yeah. just because... I don't know. I just, my grandpa did when I was younger and guitar, I took lessons for a while, but I just never had the passion for it. I guess I was always into the vocal stuff and it was, I was, I never could mix them. Like I could be so good at guitar and I'd be so good at singing. And as soon as I mix them, it's like, I couldn't even play guitar on beat. Mm. And, oh, it's yeah. That's yeah. Tough. At the same time. Yeah. I, I mean, I wish oh I didn't gosh. give up on it so early. I would love to learn like i said i'm a big learner so like i would love to learn everything it's definitely not too late yeah david gilmore uh, the guitarist of pink floyd like Uh really got into guitar when he was 25 really yeah that's awesome i remember hearing that when i was a kid i'm like that's my favorite guitarist ever that's insane like that's awesome so i was in it yeah it's definitely never too late for that yeah Uh, i would love to learn just i would just love to be fluent in it and especially if i do branch into other genres i would love to play my own music you know that's just oh yeah another aspect that adds a lot of respect yeah, you confront your own band. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. that'd be that'd be awesome. Uh, so, what has your impression of Louisville's rap scene been to you, and how does it compare to the other music scenes involving different genres you've acted re- interacted with, either here or in different cities? Um, I feel like I definitely know more than your average person about the local rap scene. Yeah, I like, had a very obsessive phase just because you know I was starting out. I mean. Without the other rappers in the city, I wouldn't have the confidence I do now. I wouldn't have some of the people supporting me that I do. So I very much cherish the local rap scene in a lot of ways just because of how supportive they tend to be to me. And I see it shared everywhere. And like half of the rap shows I go to, the artists are there in the crowd. Oh yeah, And it's just like, I love that support. At the same time, I wish there was some more fans in the crowd. Mm-hmm. But... I just love that the artists are there supporting us. So it's like the support is much different than I think I see in other cities. 
where like it's so competitive but at the same time the city is very competitive i just think it's under wraps but like yeah as soon as there's a chance to compete everybody's biting at it i just think we just got to come together a little bit more you know we have 12 shows on the same day and we've got 12 artists wondering why nobody came to their show and it's just yeah i just would like to see a lot of a lot more blending yeah. and coordination for sure yeah i could definitely see you know no matter what mindset people have mm -hmm. coordinating shows so everybody's show is well attended there's right. nothing wrong with that right exactly yeah. uh yes yeah just directly competing each other in that way just both sides kind of lose out yeah you just, split it sense. in half yeah that's a good idea i like mm -hmm. that uh, so are there any local artists you particularly admire from afar that you have been able to interact with yet? Oh, for sure. Um, a Gift, he's a huge one. I love A Gift. I listen to his music a lot. Um, let's a little closer. Kind of like all of that's crazy. I haven't linked up with them much, but mm -hmm. I mean, I've talked to Zelly a few times. We did a show with him, but they're great. They're very talented people. There's no denying them. Like they're a very strong group in the city. They have a lot of good artists, nieces, insane like yeah. niece is very humble too very respectable other than that i don't know about haven't got to interact with obviously i'd love to meet tiller but that day will come as far as artists i've interacted with god there's so many there's so many that just deserve their flowers i get yeah. them all day yeah shouts out to that's crazy that is oh, a, yeah. a insanely good uh insanely talented group of uh folks right there like, yeah. my gosh zero misses yeah uh Zelly, has just continued to impress me. You know, oh, yeah. And all aspects. His music videos. Mm -hmm. I've, I've edited a few of his music videos and the shots he gets, you know, he's he, and he knows like what he wants from a color grade and yeah. stuff. And that, and he creates the artwork for them a lot of the times, like some of that cartoon work he did. And, uh, and, and he's an artist himself. And he's super talented. Yeah. That's like all around, there's a very talented group. I would love to talk to them, work with them. Yeah, absolutely. I'd um, love to have him on sometime. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you believe the purposes of art and music in society, would you say? If, 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 if you were to explain it to somebody, you know, who music is not a part of their life, yeah. like how, how does music affect society as a whole? I really just feel like, like mutual enjoyment is so important. Mutual fascination. Like when you could, we could get 50,000 people in the streets of Louisville and they would be so angry at each other. They would be shoulder to shoulder. They would hate it. But as soon as you put those 50,000 people in the Yum Center at a concert for an artist that they love, mm. they're all happy together. They love it. They're so happy to be together. And it's because they're so fascinated by that one thing and they all share it. It's just like a shared love for something that's very important for anything, mm. any group of people, any community. And music does that a lot. I uh, like that's my biggest thing. That's why I want to tell people who I am so people can hear it as a community, as a group and just take it in. Yeah. I like I like that. I like the way you put that or that analogy. No, I appreciate like putting that. people all these people in one place to be mad. Yeah. But as soon as it's around one person right. that, one artist they love, then they're all like it, family. It's crazy the impact that, that can have. Yeah. What uh philosophical uh beliefs guide your life and your music? Um, I feel like right now, ever since, like I said, that stuff happened in December, it's really just appreciate life. Like mm -hmm. it's so like, I just have goosebumps thinking about it. Like mm -hmm. life is very valuable. I've lost a lot of people. I've seen a lot of things and it's just, it's not worth playing with. It's not worth not enjoying. Like just mm -hmm. getting up and doing what you love every day is very, very important because like, I don't know. You never know when that's going to end. And that's just, that's what this whole album is about for me. It's just like, you have to cherish what you have, even if it's not the best, like you have to learn a way to cherish it. That's what single mother is all about. It's like we, it was me and my mom for a long time. She was 19, 20 with a child, a newborn. I'm 19 turning 20 now. I could not imagine. And it's just like, those weren't fun. They were not fun days in the moment. But mm -hmm. looking back on that, I miss that every single day. And it's just like, you have to cherish life. It's so important. Mm -hmm. Well said. Thank you. Uh, when do you find your yourself writing the most? I'm always curious of when artists find time to do to write mm -hmm. all of this. Yeah. You know, I 
I think for for me, you know, it was always when I had like downtime at work, right? You know, because I was like, I'm getting paid, I might as yeah. well. Uh, but some people, it's like it's only in the shower, it's only in my drive to work. <laughs> yeah, or, see, or some was... people, like I set aside a time and I lock myself in a room and I do it. So, what what is that process like for you? Mine's, I mean, I've written. I can't tell you how many songs I've written just driving down the road, trying to memorize the lines and like. I'll try to put that in the studio and it's some of the best songs I've written. Mm-hmm. I feel like I write my best stuff when I'm not supposed to be writing music. Like it's yeah. like, I sit there and I could have nothing to do all day. I probably won't have any songs come out because I was thinking so hard about it. Mm-hmm. But if I got a full schedule, I'm clocked in, I'm going to be thinking about an entire song. It's going to be pulled up on my phone. I have a whole song ready when I go back to home. Wow. When I go back to home, when I get back home, I could just lay it down. I could read the whole song and it's just like when I was in high school, I was writing in class every day. Like that was my thing. In college too, I was writing in class. But as soon as I got home, it's like the creativity was gone. And it's mm-hmm. just like, because I can, you know? Yeah. So like when when you're not supposed to, that's when I find my most creativity. Yeah, I I, I, I agree. <laughs> it's like, don't, why don't write music while you drive either. I don't yeah. suggest that's very dangerous. But yeah. Uh, I, I, that is that is so true though. It's <laughs> it's it reminds me of like when you fight so hard to remember something, right? And it's only until it's completely left your mind, the want to remember it, and then it's completely gone, is that it comes right back. Right. It just falls into place. It's like when we w- try to do something or we can't force ourselves. No. Sometimes it just like I, that part of our brain just will shut down yeah. entirely. Like, nope, you can't make me do this. Yeah, some people can force entire songs, and I just have never been that way. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I kind of envy that a little bit. <laughs> they don't force it, but who knows? You yeah. might be not. You might not be getting as good of a product. Exactly. So. Yeah, I've had songs take like weeks to write, and mm-hmm. it's like I don't even realize I'm writing a whole song. Right, and then I, I end up with a whole song, and it works out. Just like that's comes comes with the appreciation of it. You really do have to appreciate what you're doing. So how do you think music influences or affects us in ways that we aren't able to sense or comprehend initially? Like some maybe underlying effects that music has on us. I think just it's all emotional, like you know, I've I've heard songs and just cried like as soon as I hear them, and it's like, why am I even crying right now? I'm not mm-hmm. sad, but it's just the um, the emotional impact that music has is insane, and you don't even necessarily have to understand it. You know, I can hear a song that's completely in Spanish, and just like the vocals are mm-hmm. conveying that emotion. In high school, I was performing Italian songs because I had to. My mm-hmm. choir teacher made me, but you still convey the emotion through those lyrics. You have no clue what you're seeing. But it's a universal it, language. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's it's so beautiful to be able to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Yeah, you can, yeah, no matter the language, you know if the song's a sad song right, exactly. or not, you know. Exactly. But, uh, you know, initially, you know, of course, there could be songs with lots of layers, like mm-hmm. uh, how... Like swimming pools is not a party oh, yeah. song, oh, but yeah. it comes off as one. <laughs> and so maybe if you don't speak English and you listen to swimming pools, you might be like, "Yeah, this is a party song. Let's go." <laughs> Never thought about that. <laughs> but I, but he in, did, did that intentionally, mm-hmm. I believe, from what I from what I understand. So, can you describe a moment when you felt a deep connection with your audience during a live performance, and maybe a if you have one, a, a moment when you were writing that you had the audience in mind and you, you kind of wrote for them? Um, I feel like as far as like performance, uh, I did my album release. It was June 9th, I think 23, maybe even 22. Um, that was for my album, Second Street. And I did a show at Portal. I It was a lot of money for me at the time to get that venue when I was mm-hmm. that young. So it was a big deal for me. And... You know, not as many people came out as I would have liked, but it was a very unrealistic expectation. But the people that did come out, they showed me so much love. And that that, like that show really showed me that I had at least 50, 60 people that really supported me. They paid Mm -hmm. for a ticket to be there. They helped me profit off of my first show. You know, I didn't Mm -hmm. lose any of that money. And it was just like, it felt so nice. I was going way over my time limit. Portal they weren't very happy with me. I apologize at the end, but like 
everyone in the crowd was genuinely enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that was the first time I didn't have somebody in the crowd that I saw not having a good time. And it really did impact me. Uh, as far as writing and thinking of the crowd, I used to do that a lot. I used to like, I used to write songs just to perform them because we used to perform once a week at a park. And it was like, I'm going to write a hype song this week because you all have hype songs and I, I see how the crowd reacts and I don't. So I want to have a song where the crowd reacts like that. So I've had a few songs like that in the past. But other than that, recently, I just, I write for the listener for sure. Yeah. I gotcha. Uh, so in what ways do you think music can bring about social change? I definitely think just this shared impact of it. Like I said, like we see, especially with LGBTQ, we see music impacting people's lives every day. Like it's still happening in front mm -hmm. of all of us. Like Chapel Roan is like, she's going insane with everything that's being done music just impacts every layer of life without people realizing it you know like the the important people in the world might not care about the music that's impacting people or pay attention to it but the people that it's impacting it's so important to them it's very important for other people to appreciate it yeah i agree, I agree. so how do you approach writing a song initially do you start with the beat and kind of let the beat draw it out of you or do you start with an idea and then search for a beat to form itself around that idea and uh yeah and do you seek out a producer mm -hmm. and or do you seek out uh, beats that might have been made by other producers right. you like or what's that process like for you i feel like i mean any artist can contest the beat the beat process is the hardest part. It's just, yeah. it's, it's, oh my like, gosh. it's the fundamental part of the song. Mm -hmm. And you can't have a bad beat no matter how good you rap on it. So I feel like those songs where I'm writing when I'm not supposed to be, I usually don't have a beat yet. Um, usually it just starts with like a flow that I have in mind. And then later on, I try to find like the perfect beat for it. And that can be really hard sometimes. Sometimes I never find what I'm looking for. And there's some times where I sit in my room and I go on my beats tab on YouTube and I scroll for hours and sometimes I find one. Sometimes that was just the hours wasted. Oh, well, you win and you lose. Yeah. It's a I, process. I've definitely, I, I, there's such a, I mean, there's nothing better than the feeling of like going on like beat stars or YouTube mm -hmm. and just, I've done it for hours too, where yeah. I'll just go through just, and I'll, I'll look up crazy weird key terms <laughs> and then I'll go like 40 pages in and just like to where the algorithm stopped caring about these producers. And, you know, you start seeing like the, you know, zero to 200 views. Right. And you're like, these are the ones that the algorithm right. is leaving behind. Cause like the first few pages, they're all like sponsored usually or something. And yeah, you'll find just like, no, I don't vibe with this. I don't vibe with this. But then there's that feeling when you hear something Boom. and it's got like, it's like uploaded maybe like a week ago, <laughs> no views. And you can immediately message the producer, say, I love this. Yeah. And they message you right back. Like, yeah, that's awesome. word. Like, let's work together. And then you've just created like a, a relationship with somebody who lives halfway across the world. Yeah, that's insane. And uh, relationships but, are very important, too, yeah. especially with producers. Absolutely. Actually, I have a song. Um, um, it's my next single actually that I've been teasing it um, the producer he had posted on YouTube but I saw in his beat stars I went to the link afterwards it said he was having a competition for it and basically whoever sent him the song and whichever song he liked best they get the full stems to this beat they get full licensings to it so I was like that's awesome I would have never known that if I didn't go look on his beat stars page so I sent it to him and he hit me back like a week later and was like, hey, you have the best song on this beat. Um, send me all the stems, send me all the licensing. That's and awesome. So that's why I cannot wait to drop this album. I mean, this next single too, just because it's nice to have a relationship. Like he really likes the song that yeah. on this beat. It's nice to know. Yeah, I think that is something I've, I've always imagined producers have kind of like a negative part of selling the beats that you make yeah. is you i imagine a, a scenario that would not be so great for you as a producer is that you pour your heart and soul into this beat that you love and you're like i can't wait to see what somebody <laughs> does on it right 
and somebody buys the exclusive license, they pay like the 500 yeah. and you're like, let's go. Mm-hmm. And then you hear it and it comes out and you're like, oh, I hate this. <laughs> I don't want anybody to hear this. And it's like the $500 gets spent, yep. and, but the song, the beat that you love is out there and it's done. It's out, they got and it. So that's a really great idea to have. It's like if you don't end up making the money, mm-hmm. but you end up making sure that that beat goes to the right. a good home a good home <laughs> you know and so you you all, all these people you know you get to pick you know yeah. which what which version of the song you get to mm-hmm. choose and so you got the producer's best vision yeah it was super it. awesome and I've so that's that's a really cool idea never that's, seen that's, anybody do that yeah and so that, i that's I, I imagine that's why most artists you know, or most producers like uh, I I know niece I tell her like I know she's got a hard drive of like 40 beats that she's like I don't like this I don't, yeah. I'll know and I'm not going to send it to Miles I'm not going to send it to anybody <laughs> else because they've all heard it and they don't like it right. either it's like you got to get those like 40 some odd beats and make a beat stars mm-hmm. it's like the beats that you that may not be up to like what your standard is or what you wanted from it for, or your friends like that could be the one for somebody are, they hear it exactly they'll lose their mind to be like yeah. oh my gosh and, yeah because i've heard a lot of them and it's like okay yeah this this is this could absolutely be speaking to somebody I mean, yeah like, right i'd now. love to hear them you know yeah i'm always looking for beats yeah i definitely yeah if, if anything this is a psa for to all producers who if you have them beats collecting dust on the hard drive <laughs> And you have the rights to the sample or whatever. You got all that stuff going. Make a beat stars. Just go for it. We need to have a Louisville like collective. It's like for sure. It'd be great, if, yeah, to have all the producers like have like a group that we could all jump into and like yeah. have all their links. Yeah. It's like here's everybody's beat stars. That like, would be awesome. Stuff. I think uh, it could happen. Yeah, absolutely. I think just post them. Yeah. I mean, all you can do is make money. Yeah, absolutely. And especially if they're just uh, collecting dust on a right. hard drive. If right. you're never going to use them again. It's it's Might definitely well. worth it. Yeah. Especially if you spent the time to make it. You know, you yeah. cared about it at some point when you yeah. first started, at least. That's that's what's so wild about production to me, too, is uh, it's so malleable and volatile where, like, you... The, the work's never done right. as a producer. Yeah. The, it, music is truly infinite. Where, like... A, when I get like a a vocal project for somebody, somebody came in here and they record some vocals mm-hmm. and I, there's an end point to it, you know, where there's no like, I, I, I don't obsess like for weeks about like how right. the vocal sounds because I, I kind of know I talk with the artists and get an idea of what they want. But when it's you, you know how you can get in your head exactly. after you've done some producing yourself exactly. where you're like, where do I stop? This can keep <laughs> going. Like it's just I, turning into madness. And, it's so infinite that it's like it becomes overwhelming for, for a sure. moment. You're like, this can be, this can go on forever. Like, yeah. there's no end to this at all. Honestly, like the main reason I can't produce is because I just don't know when to stop. Yeah. See, even like a book you write, oh yeah, has a start, rising action, climax, falling action, finish. <laughs> it's got like a, it's got a beginning yeah. and end. But music, it's it's truly infinite because just especially yeah. producing, you can add so much. Yeah. People put anything in a beat nowadays, so it's just like, oh yeah, so many layers to it. People put anything in a beat is crazy. I mean, that is <laughs> that is really true. I've heard some. I love the uh, the like the bad beats on like TikTok, oh, yeah. like oh, the ones yeah. that people purposely create to sound like, like the eight oh eight, just eight oh eight, or just like the <laughs> anvil falling cartoon sounds. Yeah. I love that. I don't know. Might hop on one one day. You might have to. Honestly, some of them are so goofy. I would love to hear some artists on them. Uh, so how do you stay inspired and avoid creative burnout? I I, I think that's the most common thing people yeah, struggle with sure. is burnout where you like you get really, really excited about a project and then just suddenly it's like you, yeah. it, it kind of fizzles out and you're like, dang. And, and then you kind of have to step away from it for a while. Like, how do you... How do you pace yourself and and stay inspired during that pacing? I feel like, I mean, I feel like I definitely do burn out all the time, especially with this album. You know, I have so many ideas with it that just, they come and they go. Like I, with 90s hip hop, I wanted the whole album to be, like the whole promotion to be themed like that. You know, I started with Jordan Wayans. I wanted to like recreate some Wayans Brothers episodes, but it's just like, some things are just unrealistic and you yeah. just got to drive them. Oh, well. 
And like with writing, I get very burnt out. I can't force it. I just kind of try to let it come to me as much as I can. You know, I'm not always in the studio. A lot of rappers are in there for 13 hours at a time. That's just not me. And no. I'm okay with knowing that's not me. You just definitely can't force it. Gotcha. So what is your process for translating complex emotions or concepts into music, specifically lyricism? I feel like I try not to just say it, you know, like when something traumatic is to happen, I try not to just lay it out there right away. I say it without necessarily giving it to you. I try to give context clues and I don't know. I feel like sometimes it's very effective when something is just said and it feels like a punch in the chest when mm. you hear it. But at the same time, some things are very harsh. Like so I've had some things happen that are just very harsh to just hear. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's hard to convey them in a way without just saying them. But when you can master it and you're saying this certain thing in such an intricate way, it's very nice. I feel like that's a very important thing when it comes to sharing your emotions. Yeah. There's this uh, girl I talk about a bunch uh, who does that super well. The balance of saying this harsh, devastating thing straight up mm -hmm. and then also having nuance to yeah. it, not dancing around it at all, like it being there, but just bringing some, giving it the gravity it deserves. Yeah. Um, her name's Ethel Kane. And her music is I I insane. Uh, I, I, if I was to give it one word, devastating is what I'd say her music is. Yeah. Uh, really, really incredible uh, depth of emotion from, from her. And that's what reminded me of her is when you said uh, the, about that, just finding that balance between yeah. saying it outright, because that can be, you know, that can be indeed very mm -hmm. powerful because sometimes it just needs to be said. Yeah. You know, um, there's certain lines in music I've I've heard that kind of you know it's like oh my gosh you said that like uh, like uh, when the first time I heard "Devil in a New Dress," <laughs> there's some lines in that. Oh I was yeah, like, wow oh, yeah, you, that's actually kind of awesome. You just said that, <laughs> you know. I think that just it feels it's emotionally impactful when you just say it, and it's just like the impact that it has when you just hear it out mm -hmm. of nowhere is very strong. But songs that are just pure nuance as well have are valid in their own mm -hmm. way because sometimes you kind of like what makes a like some scary movies really good is never revealing the monster. Yeah, it's leaving it up to the audience, and that is this perfect balance of everybody's going to superimpose their biggest mm -hmm. fear onto what could be there in the dark and that's going to be the most effective thing for the audience because they're all putting their they're projecting their right. experience on it so it's the scariest thing for them individually as soon as the monsters revealed and put into the light maybe some people in the audience are like oh my gosh that right. is exactly <laughs> as scary as them. but most people are like uh oh, that's not as scary as because i i had my imagination coming up way crazy scarier, stuff yeah that was way scarier and so the same way you could do that with music almost yeah. where you insinuate something, but let people kind of project their own experience onto mm -hmm. that and kind of take on that perspective. For and sure. so I, I think yeah, both ways are, you know, and that's what makes music so great. Yeah. I, 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 love that I think analogy I too. That's talked awesome. about it last time where, you know, not only that balance of nuance, but um, just the, 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 at both amounts of effort are valid. Right. Talked about like young thug and, Playboy Cardi and Future in the studio, mm -hmm. maybe like they they are able to kind of you know turn on the faucet, sort of say, and go in there and just freestyle, right? And that gives us a intimate kind of view into their process into who they are. But they didn't like. There's no polish or any lot of work or right. uh, premeditation that went into that. But it's something that people go crazy listen mm -hmm. to at the gym or on their way to work to get them pumped up and. It, or to just go put on at a party yeah. and it's like just as valid as the song like that you know took years to craft together and get features from all yeah. over the world <laughs> and have so many hands touch on and it's like a t and then they they come out and they do the same numbers you know and it's because people 
both are very valid. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I think that's what's so cool about music is like you, you don't even it's it's not about the effort put into it's the about the raw experience that somebody gets from it. And as yeah. long as it feels genuine, that's what shines through. For sure. You know, from uh, you know, whether it's it's the vocals or the beat just to sound so perfect or yeah. yeah. So how has your music evolved over the years? would you say? Uh, and what has driven those changes? I definitely think it's evolved quite a bit. Honestly, um, like I said, I was just making music for fun. Like I was just learning. Um, and like I had a very different experience than most artists. I was just dropping it right away. Like mm-hmm. I've, I've figured out what Distro Kid was immediately. And incredible. I wish I didn't. Honestly, like <laughs> yeah. some of those, you know, some most artists shouldn't drop the first song they make, but right, I right. did. And you know, I'm still battling with myself with those songs. Like I still, I talk to my mom every day. Like, I think I'm about to delete all my music. And mm-hmm. she's like, no, don't. Cause mm-hmm. you know, you might cherish it one day. I try to tell myself that I'm learning, but I just feel like now I really shoot for the longevity of the music. And will this matter to somebody in five years? Can somebody still relate to this? And I really think they can. I'm really hoping they can. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like it's a lot less for fun and more for expression and emotion how do you think the digital age and streaming services has impacted the music industry and artists and how can artists start changing how the way they make and market music to kind of guess make themselves prepared for what's going to happen i feel like that i mean the digital age obviously has just taken over music it's Mm -hmm. like we went from cds as records to streams and it's like there's so many different apps websites you can stream from and it's just like the authenticity of listening to the product isn't there as much the authenticity of a physical album in your hands that you get to take Mm -hmm. home just isn't there anymore I feel like that's so important to me. Like you'll always see me drop a CD with every album I release. Even if nobody buys it, I'm gonna have 50 CDs sitting in my house just because mm-hmm. I value things like that. They're physical. It's a lot more cherishable to have. And I feel like mm-hmm. any other artist should honestly buy some CDs while you still can because I heard that CDs might not be around for too much longer. So I just feel like it's very important to stick to your roots and like Spotify isn't paying us anything. So right. it's like you can sell an entire album for five bucks as a CD. That's nothing. Like, mm-hmm. makes so much more money than you will on Spotify. And I think if everybody started doing that again, music would thrive. Yeah. What do you think of the use of AI not only being implemented into music, as such as you may have heard me talk about the feature? Yeah. The, what do you think about? the AI feature and AI vocals not only being implemented into music, but being wholly accepted in the way autotune was accepted into music. And how do you see that changing music in general? And does it take away from the authenticity of it? I think it's one of those things that can really help us, but could also really hurt us. Just like... Mm -hmm. I mean, the same way social media was like, we have to adapt to it every day. And like, obviously it can be very dangerous recreating popular artists, songs and voices and stuff like that, but it can also be very helpful. I just Mm -hmm. think it's one of those things that has to be used the right way by everybody and Mm -hmm. can't be overused. I do think that messes with the authenticity of music a lot when, you know, I'm pretty sure there was an AI song up for Grammy nomination, which is just like, that's... It's nuts. Yeah. I mean, props to whoever did that, but mm-hmm. it's just not very authentic, I can't say. I don't hate it, though. I'm always open to new things. It's hard to imagine to me that AI could replace... Well, that that record labels could outsource music to AI. Yeah. Because I think people are just genuinely weird as hell yeah and for sure no matter what (laughs) yeah no matter what machine learning like data set 
that they have that the machines are learning from. Mm -hmm. We may be a product of everything that came before us, but we have an infinite capacity to do out of pocket stuff yeah. all the time. Yeah. I think if you just open up TikTok, it's like there's nothing called for that. No. And so no. I think music's the same way. I think perhaps I I I've talked and he heard people say, you know, kind of, you know, raise raising the the red flag being like, yo, th this could affect music negatively. Yeah. But what if automating all these things in music starts a renaissance in even more creative endeavors, kind of like a lash out against. I think maybe it could prompt people to get even weirder, yeah. more wild, <laughs> because music might start sounding more samey than we've already heard. Right. Like, I think people had the, I, I don't know how much of this is true, but I've, I've had a lot of friends say like a lot of, you know, modern country music mm -hmm. started kind of sounding samey during mm -hmm. a period. Yeah. Uh, may not now, but there was kind of a fad where like the labels were like, we want it to sound like this. Yes. And so if you, you should do this and that, but that caused a lot of country artists to like break out of the yeah, mold, do something kind completely of different. exit the stratosphere of whatever that was taking over and be like, I'm going to do some weird stuff or I I'm going to do that. some, I'm going to, I've seen, you know, modern country artists, you know, just with a guy in acoustic guitar, just like make some devastating music. Yeah. I and mean, like talk about, you know, like the opioid crisis in their town or the really real experiences they're having. Sprawl. And that's like breaking out of the mold. Be like, I'm not going to be this commercial, you know, polished thing. I'm mm -hmm. just going to be the truth. So I think as long as people are speaking their truth. Yeah. Genuinely. And continue just being weird, which is inevitable. It's an emergent, you know, thing <laughs> of, of just people. Then and yeah. art, and I think we don't have to worry about too much because I yeah. think we'll be able to tell, especially those of us who grew up before that mm -hmm. and and kind of saw the transition, we'll be able to tell pretty starkly what is and what isn't. Right. Uh, and but there, we may find ourselves putting on the AI playlist, you know, 20 <laughs> years from now, be like, I kind of like this. It's because <laughs> this, this may, there might be certain music that promotes certain neural activity. Right. Like the, 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 the beats to study to playlist might actually have scientific backing and, and neural research behind it that actually sick. puts your brain into this kind of flow state. Like, literally puts you into a flow state so you can lock in on what you do and so uh, and so because there's what i imagine like with quantum computing once we start getting our first quantum computers we can start doing those that neural research on that and so we can there'll be playlists playlists that do affect our perception of time which uh, affect the it. way like the neurons in our brains fire the rate they fire and so we can have music that slows down time for us that perceptually would awesome. which would be insane so there, there's not i don't i don't see there being too much negative to it i think yeah. there's it's just the same thing when everybody got uh access to the internet you know mm -hmm. people are like now everybody's <laughs> there's this the side feels like now anybody can make music yeah but then there's me it's like now anybody can make music <laughs> that's so great i like sure it's there's great we, outlook to have you know uh that that's so good because you know that you know, there's an eight-year-old kid out there who's the best right. artist in the world and doesn't even know it. And 100%. he, you know, not everybody has access to, especially when you're a kid, you don't have access to this recording right. equipment. Right. But now if you have a cell phone and if you have an iPhone, especially, you're good to go. Yeah. You got GarageBand, the, in, the, in, the, the built-in microphone on there is good enough. You can start recording and go crazy. And a lot it actually people, makes something sound insane. A lot of people don't value that either. Like it's yeah. at the fingertips. Yeah. It, but when you're truly hungry, yeah. you find a way. Oh, yeah. You find a way. Like I, yeah. I talked, you know, with uh, friends of mine who did the Guitar Hero microphone oh with, the sock, with the sock over the it. The sock over it. And yep. then plugging it in. And the artificial like, pop We're filter. good to go. Like, <laughs> you find a way when you love, yeah. when you love it. And I think that's... Uh, another thing I, I know I've talked about that you may have heard is just starting with bad equipment is yeah. kind of awesome. Yeah. 
Because if you start with like the world, the world class equipment, you, you will never appreciate it. Yeah, and you will not really truly know how to use it. You want to? I, I, if you know, if if I ever have a kid or anything, I, and they ever express interest in an instrument, I'm gonna get them probably a beat up inch of a version <laughs> of that instrument because like I, uh, I loved having a terrible guitar when yeah. I grew up. I, 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 I didn't at the time. I wish right. I had a nice guitar. Right. But thank God I did because I had to change the strings. Mm -hmm. I had to do the intonation myself. I had to learn how to, you know, take the input jack out and put it back yeah. in because it would always disconnect and have to take the guitar apart. And but you got just, to learn all yeah. of that stuff. And, uh, you know, the same can go for when you're a rapper, I imagine, you know, for sure. You start. You with the voice memos, yeah. First, yeah, you start writing and whole and, entire song in uh, one voice memo. Yeah, I uh, when I talked to Dom B, you know, he was doing like he played the beat in the background, uh -huh. pressed the cassette record, uh -huh. and then got close enough. <laughs> and, and it was the internal microphone of the boombox, just oh that little gosh. tiny hole. And so he's got to put the beat here, <laughs> and then just like rap over it. And you have to rap straight through yep. verse and hooks. One take. Verse and hooks. That's one insane. hook all the way through. Same with the ad libs. And if you messed up, you have to throw the tape out. That's insane. So that's the stuff that makes you Just great. You have to cherish that makes that you stuff. great. Yeah. And you do have to cherish that. So um, are there any other uh, collaborations or songs uh, outside of uh, Skylar that you could uh, clue us into? Or have you been collaborating with any local artists lately? Yeah, I'm always working with Ty. I can, of course he's got yeah. a lot coming um definitely i've got a feature with coming with him i think two actually i uh, know if you've heard grammy it's already out but uh um, yeah. we have a very very good song i love it it's coming out soon on his tape so definitely tune into that awesome other than that i'm always open to collaboration like mm -hmm. right now i have this album i don't necessarily want to be making solo music right now because then i got to figure out what to do with it so, right right i'm open to any collaborations um I've just been doing features anytime anyone asks. I'm just I like building relationships like we talked about. Yeah. And collaborating is so huge yeah. in general just because you double your audience. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's 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 a wonderful thing to yeah. do. I'd love to see more split rap albums in the city or pop sure. albums. For sure. Love to see that, especially people who don't usually run with each other. Yeah. And cuz there's there's certain people I'll be like it'd be insane if we got like a like what if we get, like I I'm trying to think like a like a Hoosier and Nice record. Can you imagine if those two insane. going head to head at each like that would be see, so that's cool like, cuz like their more things energy, need to happen like that. Their energies are like I don't know that they they would I think they'd have really good chemistry and so just like just being able to I, I just I'd love to see more yeah. of that more collaborations because yeah. uh, bands do it in uh, in the hardcore scene a lot mm -hmm. just like a split EP mm -hmm. it's like two songs two songs or one or three songs like what and and sometimes it can just just be the band they don't yeah. have to actually yeah like, it can just be them and the like the, they could be six songs two from each artist and then two that are collab but because it's, yeah, it's a bit that. harder for bands to do a collab song right it's like well you got like 14 people in the room now <laughs> like are you gonna play the drums or am i playing drums it's like okay i'll play the toms Couldn't and imagine. you play the, the <laughs> you know the cymbals so yeah that's that they usually just have a vocalist or something coming cool just song. to represent the band but um what advice would you give uh other artists in louisville who are trying to establish themselves in the city who feel like they just can't break through they don't feel like anybody's hearing them seeing them and they're feeling maybe discouraged about that definitely just be yourself uh be truthful like a lot of people don't think that people don't see it or can't read them but they probably can just stay true to yourself mm -hmm. don't lie on your songs if you don't have to and just don't make music for other people but uh, that, that was doing that forever make music for you and if you can't find people that enjoy it oh well like it's don't make music to be famous ever mm -hmm. I, I definitely don't think that should ever be the goal that's real yeah if if you go into it for the wrong reasons it just it won't last anyway exactly because exactly. you'll be disappointed right you'll be immediately fulfilled when you make something that is important to you mm -hmm. not something that you 
hoped would be important to others. Right. And then if it's not important to them and they're not constantly giving you gratification for this thing, then you're not going to get it. Exactly. And, and it'll feel empty anyway if you create something that you that's kind of a de- detached from you because it's something you've thought other people would like. Right. And if it does do well, then you're like, well, that's not even me. That's not that me. was like yeah. something that uh, it was a version of me that I thought people would like. Yeah, I definitely I have a few songs like that. You know, they're some of my most streamed songs and mm-hmm. they're not me. And that's like one of the biggest reasons I am very adamant on being myself now. Yeah. It's just because, you know, really hoping these songs can do those numbers because that's me, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we had kind of touched on this earlier, but mm-hmm. have, have you have you performed with a band yet, or have you have, do you have any thoughts of doing that? I'm definitely looking forward. I'd love to see, uh, yeah, guitar front in the band. That'd be yeah, sick. I would love to. Um, we never have, but we're looking to do a booking at the first place we ever performed. Mom's music. Uh, oh hell yeah! Classic. This we, is classic. We used to have like Fucking ten sick. people in that room watching us, but we really want to sell it out, take our time, and have mm-hmm. a live band for the first time. So we're just working on that, getting all that together. Really trying to take our time with the shows because you can't do a show every week and expect people to come if we're not putting up the streams. And we just trying to be honest with ourselves. So we're taking our time with it, but it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen very soon. Gotcha. I'm excited. So what can we expect on the road to uh, the release of Skylar? Because October is a... It's kind of... It's coming. It's coming. Don't remind me. Don't remind me. (laughs) Um, Definitely a lot of singles. Um, I'm trying to get my foot in the door with it and have people hear it before they get to hear it. You know, I want you to get an idea melodically what I'm doing. I'm not doing what I used to do. Um, This Jordan Wayan sound is a lot of what it might sound like, so... With this next people, I'm hoping people really get it. And then singles after that. And then I'm dropping the album in October. And my birthday's in October. I'm turning 20. So Hell yeah. it'll be a big month. I'm really excited. Will it be a Halloween theme show? <laughs> we'll see. It might be a Halloween album. I don't know. I love Halloween. Like I, I think my next tattoo will be a Halloween tattoo. I, I, I was born in October. So like I have to love Halloween. So we'll yeah. See. We'll see. Love Halloween too. I'm looking forward to it. It's yeah. been very hot lately. Yeah. And we turned the AC God. off in the studio, so it's very hot here too. Just but, fall in general. That's, yeah. that's my comfort it's zone. Just, it is. Yeah. It's very comfortable. Yeah. It's just very comfy time of year. Yeah. I'm looking forward to October. I think we need it right now. Yeah. Um, is there anything you'd like to share with your fans or any final thoughts you have before we get out of here? Not really. Um, Skylar in October. Skylar in October. It's, all I'll talk about for the next three months, I guarantee it. So, gotcha. and a new and track a with Ty coming up. Yeah, a for sure. With Check Ty. out everything Ty does. That kid yeah. is insane. You know, if you don't listen to what I do, listen to what Ty does, please. please. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, real quick, because I, I didn't yeah. ask before, but how how long have you been working with Ty? And uh, um, how, how'd you guys start working together? I think so. We actually just he randomly messaged me on Instagram. Um, said a kid had sent him one of my unreleased songs. I didn't even know the kid. I didn't know how he got it. And I was like, all right. Um, he said he made music. He sent me a song. It was called I've Been Thinking. And I asked him, I was like, can I please hop on this second verse? Let me remix it. And he was hesitant at first. He was like, all right, I'll send it to you. So mm-hmm. I did my thing on it. Uh, I made it seem like we were going bar for bar. I don't know. I just like, I really liked his voice. He had a deep voice. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. And um, like a week later, he messaged me and was like, Hey, there's a videographer at my house and we were going to shoot the original I've been thinking, but I think we're going to shoot the one with you if you want to come over. I was like, I'm at my girlfriend's house. I'm wearing shorts and a white t-shirt, but yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there in five minutes. Yeah. So then we met for the first time at the music video. And I think honestly, that's the reason that we clicked and like we've been doing this music stuff forever. Like when I met him, he wasn't even dropping on all platforms yet. Like I made his distro kid with him. Wow. So it's just like, like, I love that kid. He's, he's hungry. He's 18. Like he's really doing it. That's awesome. It can happen from an Instagram DM. Oh yeah, for sure. 
can don't be reach. don't be scared to reach out. Yeah, to reach Everybody out to their DMs. the artists you respect and exactly. you're like, I genuinely want. Don't be. Yeah, absolutely. Give it, your flowers. I the, like. The, I'm the worst thing that's happened is they ignore you or exactly. say never talk to me again. Please. Oh well. <laughs> it's like oh right, well. That's, that's, Take it that's on the fun. nose. I'm always just DMing people and letting them know like yeah. you're cold. Like yeah. I love what you do. Yeah, it can it I'm can open to. doors for. Yeah, real. yeah. Don't be scared to do that. Yeah, but. uh Jordan Brooks, thank you so much for taking the time to come speak with me. Uh, thank you. We are all looking forward to Skylar in October. Um, yeah, th- thank you for coming by. Thank and, you so much. Uh, the water. Looking forward to hearing from you in the future, man. Yeah, thank you so much. Of course.